So our first speaker is uh, Feng Deng from uh, Trinity College Dublin, and she will talk about how functional networks change uh, through the aging process and how sex uh, influence these, uh, um, these changes uh, um, through the aging process. Feng? Yeah. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, can you see my screen okay? Yeah. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Fong. Um, today, I'm very happy to share uh, this work called Sex Disparity in Effective Agent on Brain Network Integrity Across Lifespan. So we explored midlife change in brain network segregation because midlife is a critical period for the beginning of age-related neuropathology which may lead to neurodegenerative disease such as Alzheimer's disease in later life. And it's also a unique disease altering window. And uh, brain network segregation quantifies um, functional specialization of different brain networks. Um, and previous studies found that age-related reduction in brain network segregation relates to reductions in structural integrity and cognition. Therefore, it may serve as a proxy for age-related decline in brain health. Uh, we also looked at sex effect because 60% of people with Alzheimer's disease are women. So to answer uh, those questions, um, we used the resting data from my data uh, from a healthy lifespan cohort and divided them into three age groups with well-matched um, sex in each group and then we computed the modular segregation to explore midlife change and the sex dis di uh, differences. So first of all, we found that uh, network segregation um, significantly decreased with age, as you can see in the figure A. So y-axis is segregation and the x-axis is age. Uh, here, higher value actually means uh, lower segregation. Sorry about this um, confusion. And uh, we also found that age-related reduction in the segregation uh, relate, related to reduction in fluid intelligence and also to structural integrity measures, which are cortical thickness and uh, gray matter volume. Uh, we then explored age effect on different brain networks. We um, defined, predefined 10 brain networks shown in the x-axis in, in, in these two figures. And you can see that um, six over 10 networks showed significant age effect with frontal parietal and uh, default mode networks show, showing the biggest effect. And we also found uh, the age related uh, effect in those specific brain networks also relates to the reductions in fluid intelligence in a similar magnitude. The order of these uh, networks for the two uh, figures here are the same. And then we uh, looked into the midlife change. So the um, x-axis is the same order of the networks with three uh, age groups. Uh, what you can say is frontal parietal and default mode and singular or per percular networks showed significantly decreased the segregation in midlife relative to young age. And uh, in addition, CDN's network and the mouth part of the motor network showed continuously decreased the segregation from midlife to, towards to older stage. And the last bit is the sex effect. Um, in the figure A, the, uh, I showed the uh, sex effect on different brain networks. You can see that um, five networks showed significant sex effect. And I highlighted those three networks showing both age and sex effects which are auditory salience and the frontal parietal networks um, so that we can look into sex differences in each individual network uh, as shown in BCD. Um, so specifically in auditory network, we found that a female had significantly um, higher segregation than male, especially in young and older stage. And uh, whereas in frontal parietal network, female had significantly lower segregation than male, uh, especially in younger stage, which are young and midlife stage. And in salience network, 
female showed significantly lower segregation than male um, in much older stage. So uh, overall, this study um, showed significant reductions in key network segregation from midlife, such as default mode and frontal parietal networks, um, and which may suggest that those networks may be particularly liable to pathological agent in midlife. In addition, our findings also suggest that sex differences on um, network segregation represent both inherent differences presenting in more younger stage, such as um, like young and uh, more midlife stage, such as frontal parietal and auditory network, and also age-related differences on network deterioration presenting in a uh, much older stage from midlife towards to older age, such as salience network. Also lower segregation in females from midlife uh, in frontal parietal and salience network may provide an avenue for us to understand the higher incidence of age-related neurodegenerative disorders in females such as Alzheimer's disease in the future studies. And uh, that's all I want to present today. Thank you for your listening. Thank you, Fang. Um, so let's start with questions. Um, I have a, a first question that is, uh, how do you interpret these um, um, sex-specific losses for the auditory network for the front operator network respectively in uh, uh, men and women? Is there an actual interpretation on why this happens and why it's auditory in uh, men and why it's uh, front operator uh, in, uh, in women? Uh, sorry, uh, my network it's, it's just ran out a little bit. Um, can you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah, sure. So since you showed that basically the auditory network is more impaired through aging in women and the frontal parietal instead is more impaired in men, do you have any interpretation from this? Why this happen? Yeah, so uh, you mean uh, for the auditory, like auditory network, uh, affect um, actually frontal parietal uh, for the frontal parietal and the salience network, uh, females um, affected more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, why do you think this happened? So, is there uh, um, some sort of uh, hypothesis on uh, some structural difference that is driving this difference? Yeah, actually. Um, the frontal parietal is a very interesting, uh, and also the formal network is a very interesting, uh, two very interesting networks. So previous studies found that uh, um, males actually um, are affected more in frontal parietal network, uh, both uh, structurally and uh, functionally, and uh, uh, whereas the full mode affect females more, and um, also uh, there there are some structural and uh, uh, functional um, evidence. Uh, in a separate um, study, we, we try to explain this um, effect by looking at a uh, uh, brain stem uh, structure called uh, blue spot, you know, uh, neuroadrenaline, um, so local cerulean. And yeah, yeah so we, we try to, because uh, a lot of molecular studies found that these sex differences in the uh, neurotransmitter. So we, we try to use uh, MRI, fMRI data to explore the, the, the sex differences in the, in the brainstem. Uh, and you, you know that the, the local LCA connect to the cilians and the frontal parietal default mode network in a, in a dense way. So uh, we, we, we try to link that, yeah. No, it's interesting. So basically the reason may be because of the connections of those networks to more uh, sort of more primitive uh, structures. No, it's very interesting. Yeah. So while we wait uh, for other questions from uh, the participants, of course, if the other panelists have questions, go on and ask. But in the meantime, uh, um, you looked at uh, in uh, integration and I wonder if uh, you would expect some effect also in um, 
uh, sorry, you looked at segregation, and I wonder if you would expect also an effect in terms of integration. So the way the different network interacts, if maybe it balances what happens that in, in in the segregation, or if uh, maybe is also disrupted. Yeah. So yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, I th the next thing I I want to um, look at is and um, find some. Um, good measures for the integration because, because the segregation is a well-established measure uh, because a lot of studies found um, the relationship between the segregation with the you know cognition, for, for example, fluid intelligence, but not crystallized intelligence. In, in our study, I also looked at this relationship showed in the figure, figure 1b. Um, the relationship disappeared in, in a, a crystallized intelligence and also it relates to the structural uh, integrities. So the segregation is a quite a uh, good measure uh, for, for us to look at the midlife change and the sex differences. And I, 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 will, I, will, look into, I will look into the uh, integration, you know, combine this to compensatory um, measures. Thank you. Also, it's interesting that in the figure that you just mentioned, the one where you compare with the fluid intelligence, the thing is that you kind of expect that maybe there is also another uh, variable that it's uh, influencing that shape because it's uh, kind of looks that it may be nonlinear. So it may be either uh, something that it's uh, making the, the figure more complex. Did you use uh, any... Any covariate to any covariate to correct uh, these results? There were uh, any possible confounding factors that uh, you took into account? Yeah, so uh, I controlled burn volume because there is a, a relationship between the segregation and burn volume, and also burn volume with the fluid intelligence as well. So I controlled that, and um, uh, I don't. I am not sure that like other confounding uh, variables there. Um, I don't know whether it's worth to uh, explore, you know, adding uh, maybe a um, second secondary uh, item in a, in a model to bait this. Um, but uh, it's just the linear model is, is very straightforward to interpretation. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. And also the Corrective for volume also makes makes sense because uh, the the volumes of the male and the female brain will uh, will affect uh, these results otherwise. Yeah. So other questions from uh, the the participants or uh, the panelists? Don't be shy. Uh, yeah, I will have a question for you. Um, I was actually wondering uh, when you say midlife aging what exactly do you mean like what what would you say is the cutoff for the like significant decline in you know in brain uh, network integrity yeah so we uh we actually um we want to look at midlife uh we, we look at midlife in a healthy cohort in this study but uh, we have uh, um like another project looking at the midlife change in uh in a risky population to uh you know, later life dementia, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, so midlife, uh, like a lot of researchers start to look at midlife population because uh, one of the uh, Lancet, uh, it's a very nice graph uh, showing the risk factor in different, uh, uh, different life stages contribute to the uh, late life dementia or neurodegenerative disease in general. Yeah. A lot of factors are in the midlife. So we focused on the midlife change um, in, 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 in this study because we try to establish a foundation for us to explore, you know, a more pathological agent in midlife and try to find uh, maybe some markers uh, before the uh, symptom showing up, we can, if we can find some brain markers uh, we, we probably we, we could um, understand more, uh, first understand more about the uh, pathological mechanism or like we can establish uh, intervention um, markers. So that's kind of like a, a motivation for this study. Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you, Feng, for the very nice talk. And uh, now we will move on to our next speaker.